all around the country uh, this weekend, there were uh, marches in favor of gun regulation, gun control, things like that. Uh, it is the it was the march for our lives, uh, and there was an estimated, according to organizers, over eight hundred marches uh, in on Friday and Saturday, all over the world. You even one in Antarctica. Amazing, right? Um, all over the world, as I said before, in countries like Israel, New Zealand, Australia, the UK, Japan, Belgium, India, France, and Chile, as well as uh, large cities in the United States, including New York, Miami, Cincinnati, Houston, Atlanta, Baltimore, uh, and Pittsburgh, uh, among others. So, massive, massive protests. Organizers estimate that there's somewhere uh, around 1.2 million people it actually might be the largest youth protests since the Vietnam War. Now, where there are protesters, you will have counter protesters. And that is, of course, 100% fine. Um, hey, man, look, if you're a counter protester for anything, that's fine. I, I will defend your right to protest. Uh, but in this case, I will also, also I will also kind of make fun of you. Um, now, it turns out that uh, while this March for Our Lives was happening, uh, there was also something called March for Our Guns. Wonderful. Uh, so now, of course, uh, you look at some of the social media from some of these marches, and you'll have uh, direct counter-protesters. Uh, in fact, uh, you have... I've got a couple of pictures uh, of some of these counter-protesters and what they were doing, and... Uh, it won't be surprising to find out that a lot of these counter-protesters, uh, very pro-Second pe Amendment people, are also open carrying their guns uh, and wielding Trump flags. So let's take a look at some of those uh, right here. Now this, uh, uh, I believe, is uh, in Austin. So this was in Texas. Uh, open carry state. Uh, oh, and look at that. He's got earmuffs. I wonder if he was there to actually listen to the concerns of people who were calling for common sense gun regulation. To me, it doesn't seem like he was interested at all in uh, listening. This also uh, happened in, I believe, uh, Austin. So here you've got somebody uh, carrying uh, open carrying an AR-15, uh, the same weapon that's used in a lot of these mass shootings. Uh, classy. So uh, this is uh, one counter-protest in Arizona. See the red MAGA hats. So, uh, of course, more Trump flags, more American flags. <laughs> uh, got a guy over there looking a bit slack-jawed. <laughs> uh, look, hey, again, I, I defend their right to protest, but I also will defend my right to make fun of them uh, for protesting. So there you go. Uh, another, uh, supporter, uh, Trump supporter in, uh, Arizona. This is, uh, one happened in, uh, Phoenix. Uh, in fact, I believe this, uh, man is being quoted as saying, Hey man, look, uh, if the teens attack me, well, I will attack back. So wait, are, are you saying that you're afraid of teenagers? Well, that's what you're saying. Like, well, hey man, I'm just using that gun for my own protection. Like, I've got that AR-15 on me, uh, and if those teens come after me, well, then I I'm going to attack them back. Now, this same guy apparently is quoted uh, as saying that gun violence on the rise, you know, uh, that people are saying that gun violence on the rise. Well, he calls that fake news. What well, is it fake news? Well, let's break it down by the numbers. Now, according to the Gun Violence Archive, this is a nonprofit organization that all it does is it tracks media and law enforcement reports of shootings. So all it is is, is, is they go through and they, they look at reports. They're not biased for or against. They're just looking at actual data. Now, they report that excluding most suicides, at least 15,549 people were killed by guns uh, in the United States. Now, why would you uh, exclude suicides? That's a good question, actually. Um, well, it's... Look, suicide a, is a very important thing, but again, that doesn't harm other people or uh, other groups of people, so that's, I believe they left that out. Uh, now, in December, 
The CDC published data uh, showing 38,658 gun deaths for 2016. That includes suicides. So look, when you add in suicides, it's a, an astronomical number. But even without suicides, 15,000 people were killed in the United States in 2017. Again, that's a, that's a lot of gun deaths. Now, I want to show you a chart here um, because he says strictly that, oh, look, the, the, the fact that guns are on the, uh, gun deaths are on the rise, well, that's fake news. It's actually going down. Well, the numbers don't exactly bear that out. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, that chart. So as you can see um, from the CDC numbers, um, gun violence, gun deaths have actually, uh, after staying roughly flat uh, from 2012 to 2014, in 2015 it went up, and then 2016 it went up quite a bit more. Now the gun violence archive count for 2017 marks a 3% increase over the previous year uh, and offers an early indication that the recent rise in gun deaths recorded by federal agencies is continuing to, uh, uh, is continuing. Now I have another uh, chart for you as well. Uh, this is from um, the uh, Gun Violence Archive. Let's check that out. So you can see this, these are the straight up numbers, right? 2014 total number of, uh, of incidents, 51,866. 2015, 53,000, that's an increase. 2016, 58,818, another big increase. And uh, 2017, 61,331. Now, look, that's incidents logged. So what that means is that it takes uh, fatal and non-fatal incidents, as well as suicides, accidents, and things like that, and adds that all together. So again, when it comes to uh, guns just injuring or, or killing people, that's a huge, huge number every year. So let's go back to that. So uh, it talks about uh, children, age 0 through 11, killed, injured. That's normally through an accident. 609 uh, in 2014, and it goes up. Uh, 2015, it goes back down in 2016. And then back up in 2017, uh, mass shootings uh, have actually decreased uh, since 2016, but still have increased overall. So that's terrible. Um, but, uh, okay, so... There's a lot of information on this. So, so let's break it down uh, kind of point by point. So uh, GBA tallied 31,157 firearm injuries in 2017, as I said, a uh, rise of nearly 2% over the previous year. Now, they said because non-fatal gun injuries are less likely to make the news than fatal ones, this may represent a significant undercount of the true number. In 2015, the most recent year for uh, which the CDC information is uh, available, the agency recorded 85,000 firearm inju uh, injuries. Now, the archives and your tally of mass shootings, as I uh, mentioned before, recorded a slight decrease, thankfully, from th 383 uh, in 2016 to 344 in 2017. Um, so, look, uh, that's down essentially good. But at the same time, do you know how many mass shootings other countries have had? Okay, well, uh, let's look at some of the other countries. For example, Australia. They've had no mass shootings since 1996. You know how many mass shootings Japan has had? Zero. <laughs> now, the number of people, and this is back to America now, killed in mass shootings also declined from 456 to 433. Okay. Again, okay, that's good. Uh, the number of people killed in these mass shootings, is four or more people killed, uh, has gone down. Slightly. Well, you know how many people died in mass shootings in Japan? No, because it didn't happen. You know how many people died total in, from gun deaths, gun-related deaths in Japan? Six. What's the difference? Why am I bringing these other countries into it? Well, the difference is gun control. Now, look, uh, in Japan, for example, you can still have a gun to defend your home. Australia, you can still have a gun to defend your home. Uh, but... It just so happens in order to get the gun, you have to go through strict licensing requirements, tests, and screenings. They may actually make it pretty difficult for people who might have ill intentions to be able to go and get a gun. So, 
But in America, we're doing the opposite. We're saying, no, no, no. The only way that you'll be safe is not we keep guns away from certain people. No, we're just going to give everybody guns and then yeehaw, right? It'll all work itself out. And some of you might wonder why we live in a shooting gallery. Now, I've got more numbers. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, children and teenagers, uh, 3,964 children and teenagers were shot in 2017. That includes both fatal and non-fatal shootings. Now, I do have a stat that does make, uh, that's going to make people who are pr very pro-Second Amendment and, uh, you know, pro-keeping guns in your home very, very happy. They said incidences of defensive gun use increased slightly from 1,979 in 2016 to 2,030 in 2017. So, hey, congratulations. Uh, defense of your home using a gun has actually increased. Okay, great. And look, nobody wants to take that away. You know, a shotgun is really good for uh, defending a home. Not only that, but look, again, a pistol, a handgun. That's actually pretty good for defending a home as well. Do you need an AR-15 to defend your home? Likely not. Unless you're fading, facing hordes of invaders. And in that case, I would probably want to use a shotgun anyway. It, look, a shotgun is, is actually pretty effective. I mean, it would be effective against zombies too. If I was stuck in a zombie apocalypse, I would want to use a shotgun. But that's just me, right? Now, again, the AR-15. Well, it's not for home defense. And I hear this argument a lot. The AR-15, you don't need it for home defense. You need it to defend yourself against a tyrannical government. Okay, uh, look. <laughs> it, if you don't have the same armaments as the military and you're going up against the military, it's basically suicide. You have to have the same kind of armament the military has in order to effectively fight the military. Look, if that's what you want to do, because that's what you're saying, I need to stockpile guns and weapons so that I can fight against the military uh, in case of government tyranny. That's essentially what you're saying. Hey, I love the troops, but don't worry, I'm stockpiling arms so I can shoot the troops. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying, right? And look, that's kind of what the uh, founders intended when they wrote the Second Amendment in at the time. Look, it makes sense, too, because they just fought a bloody revolution against the British to ensure our independence, right? So it kind of makes sense for them. But when they wrote it, they also had muskets. The British also had muskets. They had the same kind of military power. Now, the only difference is the British Army was much more well-trained. The advantage that um, uh, the Continental Army had, however, is they knew the land. And they started laying uh, ambushes and traps, and they also got help from the French and things like that. Uh, so the only difference really was the training and the discipline between these two different armies. It's much different today. Now we have tanks. Our military has tanks. Our uh, military has drones, fighter jets, million-dollar, you know, multi-million-dollar um, technologies, I mean, aircraft carriers, you name it. They have incredibly advanced military technology. Whereas the average citizen has access to an AR-15 with a 30-round magazine. There's a bit of a disparity in power. So now, if you believe that you're fighting against tyranny, well then, you would naturally... Think, okay, look, if I need to fight tyranny, then I need access to those same kinds of weapons so I can match the military in everything but discipline. Well, so what are we going to do? Legalize tanks? Legalize weaponized armed drones with missiles? Oh, what about IEDs? Something that's a little bit more accessible to everyday regular people, right? IEDs. I mean, for example, the ragtag uh, armies in, you know, the terrorists in Afghanistan use IDEs to an, a devastating effect. So do we allow that to happen? I mean, that is one way to fight tyranny, right? You legalize people who, uh, who can create and stockpile improvised explosive devices. I mean, okay, so should we have 
IEDs that are legal? Should we have rocket launchers? What about attack helicopters and bomber jets for people who are wealthier, obviously, who could be able to afford it? Or how about just a private army? I mean, again, if you're, if you're wealthy, you just hire a bunch of mercenaries and arm them with attack helicopters and things like that. Is that the route you want to go to? Who do you think is going to hire all the soldiers? Who do you think is going to amass all the expensive weaponry if we just legalize everything? It's going to be private corporations. It's going to be people who are incredibly wealthy living in gated neighborhoods. They're going to be the ones with all the weapons, all the good weapons. And what are you going to have? You're still going to have an AR-15 that you bought for 300 bucks at Walmart. It, the, it, you understand what I'm trying to point out here? <laughs> Let me give you another example. Okay, machine guns, right? It, again, machine guns are, the, for the most part, banned, right? Now, some people can get a machine gun. It is very difficult to do. It has strict requirements on ownership. And because they have those strict requirements, most people are not killed by a machine gun. So guess what? Gun control and regulation actually does work. But again, if you want to fight government tyranny, you have to remove the ban of machine guns too. So we've got to, I mean, look, if you believe in that, we've got to have the same armaments as the government has to protect us against government tyranny. That means rocket launchers, RPGs, anti-aircraft guns. Can you imagine how insane this world would be if we legalized all that stuff in the name of fighting against government tyranny? You're going to have Bob down the street holding a goddamn RPG and having an anti-aircraft gun mounted on his house. You got to have something to shoot down those drones, those fighter jets, just in case. Got to fight against tyranny. Look, this is the insane scenario that this line of thinking roads down, uh, goes down. Okay? Now, here's how you fight actual tyranny in America. The ballot box. That is our only way. Because right now, unless you do all those insane things and legalize all these insane things that I just mentioned and create that scenario, which I'm sure some would be great, uh, would, would love it. They would end up being, you know, the warlord on the block, which would be scary in itself. We have to have some way. But thankfully, the, uh, the founders of the Constitution also had, also had another way. Through voting. Through participating in our electoral process. And that's what we can do. And I think that's actually the smartest and the best way. Because unlike some people, I'm not in favor of Bob with his RPG. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.